Now, how are all these levels actually measured in, a, um, in these atoms? I mean, it's enough to have these nice, I'd say beautiful chalkboard renderings of, <laughs> of these levels and stuff. But it's, it's also nice to measure. And one of the ways, there's a number of different ways, but one of the ways that we talk about in 3091 is photoelectron spectroscopy. And the basic idea is the following. I take an atom beam, I'm gonna, an atom beam like this. And I said that too fast, photo, whoops, electron spectroscopy. It's a lot like the photoelectric effect that we talked about before, except instead of a solid surface, this is with atoms. So I take my atom beam, and then from this side, I take a typically an X-ray source, super high energy photons. So much energy that they have at least the energy sufficient to knock out inner shell electrons from the atoms. And so I create this cloud of electrons that come out. And then what I do is outside this chamber here, I have a, a big magnetic field, which is uh, going into the board. And since I have a charged particle now, magnetic field into the board, it experiences the Lorentz force we talked about. And so it gets bent. And if it's traveling with a high kinetic energy, it'll go like that. And if it has a low kinetic energy, it'll go like that. And what this does is it allows me to move a detector here. Along this and actually get a energy spectrum. The kinetic energy spectrum of these electrons. Now, if we do an energy balance, we have the energy of the photon coming in. We have the kinetic energy after the, of the electron that left. And that had better equal the binding energy of that electron. Or, sorry, the sum of the kinetic energy of the electron plus the binding energy, the energy required to remove it from the atom, had better equal the energy of the photon that we used to smack into the atom. So this binding energy is what we want. This is the energy, if I go, this is the right one? Yeah, let's use this one. Let's say I wanna smack out this, this electron right here. I wanna know how deep this is. Right? Up here is zero. I wanna grab that electron and pull it out and measure how much energy it had down here. That's basically the energy or, of what it takes to remove it. So the binding energy is basically that level, and it looks like, so I have, I know this because that's the x-rays I used. I know this because I uh, measured it with my detector. I know where the electron came out, so I know it's kinetic energy. So let's just end with photoelectron spectrum. So this is the intensity, the number of photoelectrons per unit area per time. So this is the, called the photocurrent. And this is the my binding energy, and, I'll, and it's traditional to write increasing energy from right to left. And if this were nitrogen, remember that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, I'd get the following spectrum. A peak down here at 39.6, these are in megajoules per mole. And then I'll break the scale here because it's a big jump. I have 
one, a peak here at uh, 2.45, and then a peak here at uh, 1.4. So what do these correspond to? Well, if it's nitrogen, I'm down here, I get two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the uh, 2s, and three electrons in the 2p. So this must be deeper in energy now. This must be my 1s electrons. This must be my 2s electrons. And this must be my 2p electrons. Read it right off the chart. And the other interesting thing is, you notice I'm careful about the, the, uh, the magnitude. It turns out this peak height, compared with this peak height, is in the ratio of 3 to 2. Why? Well, I got three electrons here. I have three chances to knock out that one. And I only have two chances to knock out this one. So this, this simple, well, it's not simple, it costs you, set up one of these, probably costs you 150 grand, right? But, so you don't need a lot of them, fortunately. But the, uh, the nice thing about it is I can probe the deep electronic structure of any atom I want. In fact, you can probe the electronic structure of molecules in these kind of devices. 